Uh, he's here this morning, and he's a dear friend of our church and of our family. Brother Paul, you come and take the remainder of our time this morning. Thank, Thank you, you very God much. Bless you. Thank you. Well, it's a joy to be here. I enjoyed being in the early meeting this morning and with the young people the last two days. And let me just thank you, thank your church for hosting all of this. You, just, you do such a marvelous job, and uh, I, I want to tell you personally, it's encouraged me to come this far from home and see what God is doing. And the Lord is using your church. Right. I want you to know that. You're embracing this community with the love of Christ, and that is meaningful. You are making a difference, and uh, I'm going to pray for you that God will just continue to multiply your work, and uh, it's amazing when you come this far away from home and meet people, but you have a kindred spirit because you serve the same Savior, and uh, I am a long ways from home. We should pray for me, pray for my family. I'm sorry that I have to leave here in just a little bit, uh, but uh, trying to get back for meetings this week there in Knoxville. And appreciate your prayers for the college and the church there. God is blessing in a special way. I got on the elevator last night in the hotel, and I said hello to someone, and they said, you're not from here, are you? And I said, no, I'm not. What gave it away? And, uh, but I always enjoy coming to this part of the world. What a beautiful place God has given you to live and to serve the Lord. And it's just a marvelous thing. I want you to take the Word of God with me, if you will, and open it in the Old Testament this morning to the book of Psalms. I, uh, I think that the Psalms is my favorite Old Testament book. Somebody asked me, what is your favorite book of the Bible? It's the one I'm studying at the time. You understand that, right? Uh, because it's all the Word of God and it's all wonderful. But the Psalms, I go back to over and over and over again to build my faith, to encourage me. Somebody said, we pillow our faith in the Psalms. And I understand what they mean by that because it's a refreshing book and it never gets old, does it? Uh, it is all about the glory of God. It's not about our comfort. That's the way we live, you know, thinking it's all about us. But it's really all about the glory of God. Uh, but here's what we learn. As God gets the glory, it is always for our good. And God is always at work in it. I draw your attention to Psalm 118 this morning. And not just to the psalm. I wish I had the time to read the entire psalm with you. I'm not going to do that for sake of time. 29 verses. I hope you will do it. Perhaps not while I'm speaking, but sometime today. And well, I want to draw your attention to one verse, and that is a famous verse. I hope it will mean more to you when we finish. Psalm 118 and verse number 24, and I'd like for you to read it out loud with me if you would. Psalm 118 and verse number 24 says, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's read it one more time. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's try to read it with a little feeling, all right? Look at it with me, would you? Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I've had a lot of mornings where this was not my first thought when I woke up and fell out of bed, you know? But this is a wonderful verse. It's one I hope you'll commit to memory. Let's see if we can do it without looking down in our Bibles, all right? For memory. Don't cheat now, all right? We have to tell teenagers this, but you've got to tell their moms and dads too. Ready? Let's try it together. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a powerful verse. I've marked in my Bible two words. I'd like for you to do the same. I'd like for you to underline the word this and the word day. This day. And I want to speak to you for just a few moments on this subject, ordinary days. Ordinary days. You know, in life there are a few days that are extraordinary days. Uh, I think your birthday is one of those extraordinary days. I met Christian back here a while ago. Today's his birthday. Is that right? Is today your birthday? Amen. That's great. And there may be somebody else here today that's having a birthday, but birthdays are special days. It's not your whole life, but it's a reminder that you are alive, and God's been good to you and given you another year of life, and that's a wonderful blessing. Birthdays are special days. Now, the day I trusted Jesus as my Savior was a special day. As a matter of fact, uh, by way of testimony, let me just tell you, that was the greatest day of my life. I've had a lot of great days that I can remember. But the day that I came to know Jesus as my personal Savior was the greatest day I've ever lived. Because that was the day that opened up every other good day of my life. I was just a boy. And a kindergarten teacher took an interest in me. I started asking questions one day. And she took a Bible like the one I'm preaching from this morning. And she opened it up and she showed me that God loved me. That was a powerful thing to me as a kid realizing that I was not insignificant, that God loved me. She explained to me that all of us are sinners, every last stinking one of us, no matter how good we get, <clears throat> no matter how hard we try, we're all just sinners. And not one of us deserves to go to heaven on our own. 
He showed me from that Bible that Jesus Christ had loved me so much, He'd come to earth and bled and died on a cross for my sins. And He hadn't just died, but thank God, He'd been buried and He rose from the dead the third day. Amen. And she showed me that if I would put my faith and trust in Jesus as my personal Savior, He would forgive my sin, come live in my life, and give me a home with Him in eternity. I bowed my head that day, and I invited the Lord Jesus to come live in my life. Uh, the hymn writer had it right when he wrote, Glad day, glad day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Amen. How many of you know there was a day in your life you trusted the Lord as your Savior? Oh, that's a good day. By the way, if you've never had that day, I want you to know today's your day. As a matter of fact, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the accepted time. It's always today. Look, God's word is today. The devil's word is tomorrow. I had a friend that used to say something like this. He would say, procrastination is my sin. It causes me endless sorrow. I really must stop doing it. In fact, I'll start tomorrow. That's a bad way to live, isn't it? <laughs> and we, we live that way because we think, you know, another day, another... Look, tomorrow may never get here. There's a story in the Old Testament when the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt. You remember the story? And God sent Moses to say, let my people go. And Pharaoh hardened his heart and refused to do it. And God started sending those plagues. Remember the story of the ten plagues? One after another, they came in waves. And finally, one of those plagues was an invasion of frogs. Now, you may have a pet frog. If you do, more power to you. But I don't like frogs. And I certainly don't like them by the millions. And that's what they had in Egypt. I've been in Egypt. I've been in Cairo, Egypt, and tried to envision all those frogs coming out of that Nile River, invading. They had frogs everywhere. Read it for yourself in the book of Exodus. Frogs in their bed, frogs in their, in their bathtubs, frogs in their cooking ovens. I mean, they're stepping on frogs everywhere they went. That's a bad day in Egypt, let me tell you. And uh, Pharaoh sends for Moses, the man of God, and says, Pray, entreat God for me. That's the way we do it. We get in trouble. We suddenly want to use God as our emergency man, you know. Pray and ask God to take away the frogs. And Moses said, Glory over me. When shall I entreat the Lord for thee? And Pharaoh gave a one-word answer that I think is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. He actually said, Tomorrow. I'd have said, Yesterday, get these frogs out of here. No more of this. I don't know why he said that. I don't know if he'd gotten accustomed to having frogs around and kind of liked it or somebody suggested they'd become pets and he had named them Bertha and Bubba and I have no idea why he wanted those frogs one more night. But he said, just give us one more night with the frogs and tomorrow ask God to take it away. And we laugh at that and we say, wow, well, foolish. And then we turn around and do the exact same thing. I meet people everywhere I go that say, you know, someday I'm going to have a relationship with God. Someday I'm going to get right with the Lord. When are you going to do that? Well, not today. What? I meet Christian people that say, I know there's something I ought to do differently in my life. I know there's something we ought to work on in our home. Well, when are you going to start that? I think I'll start that tomorrow. And you know the amazing thing? The devil makes sure that tomorrow never comes. That's right. See, every day matters. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 27, verse number 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Yes, Interesting, isn't it? For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I told the early group this morning in the morning service, I met a man last night that didn't know God, didn't believe in God. He was a very kind man, a gentleman. And we had a long conversation standing out on the street outside the hotel. And finally he said to me, well, you know, I, I'm glad that a belief in God has helped you. I said, it's done more than help me. It's changed my life. He said, well, I'm glad for you. <clears throat> he said, you know, I think, and he really wasn't trying to be cynical or rude to me. He was just telling me what he thought. He said, I really think that for some people that's what they need, you know. They need something, you know, I hate to say it, but they need a crutch. I listened to him, and when he finished, I said this to him, Sir, I'm just going to tell you, in eternity, we will all need a crutch. Yes. See, when eternity comes and you leave this world, and you live your last day on this planet, yes. you're going to need something to lean on when you stand before God other than your own good works. Yes, sir. And the only crutch I know of that's going to stand on that day yes. is the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm leaning on Him, you see. And every day I'm learning, I must learn to lean on Him. The day I got saved, the greatest day of my life. There were other extraordinary days. Uh, the day I asked my wife to marry me, now that was a good day. It was good because she said yes, hallelujah for that. And I married way over my head, let me tell you. The day I got married, 
How many of you married people remember the day you got married? Yes, your husband and wife says, you're supposed to remember. I'm not going to give you a quiz this morning what the date is, but I remember that day. My wife and I got married on Friday the 13th. Who says all Friday the 13th are bad? That was a good day. I remember that. I remember the day our first child was born. We have three now. All look like their mother. Praise the Lord for that. But I remember when Morgan was born and I held her in my arms. As a dad, you never forget that. She's 13 now. Would you pray for me, please? I have a teenager. But I remember the day she was born. That was an extraordinary day. I remember the day that God let me know he wanted me to be a preacher. I remember the day I preached my very first sermon. You know what those are? Extraordinary days. But now I come to the point of what I want to talk to you about this morning. Most of life is not made up of extraordinary days. Most of life is made up of very ordinary days. As a matter of fact, if I ask you right now to stand and tell me every extraordinary day in your life, now maybe you're just a really interesting person, you've had an adventurous experience along the journey, and you can name lots of them, but I dare say most of us, if we tried to list the really extraordinary days that stand out, we could name them on two hands, but I want you to think about how many days God's let you live. And I want you to remember this. Men are remembered for their extraordinary days, but they are made on their ordinary ones. People are remembered for a handful of days. Look, we remember Winston Churchill for extraordinary days. Never give in, never, never, never. Extraordinary days, but look, every day's not like that. As a matter of fact, for most of us, most days are very normal days. Most of us are very average people. Life is, is not out of the ordinary every day. It's just a lot of ordinary days. But now, don't miss this. Even the ordinary days are a day that the Lord has made. Even the ordinary days are days that God has entrusted to you. Several years ago, I started writing in a journal every day. By the way, Outside of reading my Bible and praying every day, that is the most helpful discipline I've ever put into my life. If you don't write in a journal, I'd recommend it to you. And I'm not talking about just droning on and on about everything. But at night before I go to bed, I try to write down something God taught me that day, some answer to prayer, some blessing. Uh, some days, some struggle I'm going through. I have stacks of journals in my study at home. And by the way, sometimes when I'm having a hard day, any of you ever have a hard day? Let's vote on it, yes. Sometimes when I'm having a hard day, I go back to those journals and I just flip through and I read through them. You know what I see? I see the faithfulness of God. Yes. Through difficult days, and it encourages me to realize, look, you're going to make it through this day and God's going to give you exactly what you need for this day. This is the day the Lord hath made. One day I was sitting in my, my chair at home and I was flipping through a journal and I was looking at days and reading days. And I flipped a page and I came to a blank page in the journal. And just for a moment I had this thought, I wonder what will go on that day. And then I had this thought, nothing may ever go on that page. Psalm 90 says, we spend our years as a tale that is told. Did it ever dawn on you someday the last entry is going? Someday, look please, the pen will be picked up for the last time. And the last day will be lived, and your opportunity on this side of eternity will be over. And I don't know about you, that's sobering to me. And it made me realize that every day matters. Look, not a single day ought to be wasted. Look, what have I said to you? I'm going to give you $25,520. How many of you think that'd be a nice gift? Yes? $25,520. That means more to these teenagers than it does us adults, because... When you start paying taxes and paying all the bills, you realize how fast $25,000 goes, you know. But $25,520, somebody says, oh, that sounds wonderful. Look, when you first get that gift and you're spending your first dollars of it, it flies through your hands pretty quickly because you're not thinking much. You're just thinking, I've got a lot of these to spend. But somewhere you reach the end of that and you get to the last few dollars and you realize, wait a minute, I need to start being careful what I do with these because I'm running out of them. Did you know 25,520 is the average number of days the average person lives on this planet? 25,520. By the way, you want something to really sober you? Figure up how many days you've already lived. Realize how many of them you've already spent. And by the way, once you spend it, you never get it back. And by the way, that's an imperfect illustration because none of us knows that God's going to give us 25,520. 
The truth of the matter is, this could be my last day on earth. And if it is, what do I want to do differently with my life today? You see, you may think your life very ordinary, this day very ordinary. You may even think you're here by accident this morning. Or you may think you're here because you had some intention. Or you may think you're here because somebody invited you. I believe you're here by divine appointment because God wants to speak to you about time and eternity and make you realize that every day matters. We talk about great men like King David. Oh, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the man who wrote these psalms, and the man who felled Goliath in the valley of Elah. And we say, what a man. Yes, but did you ever think about how many ordinary days David lived that we have no record of what he did on those days? We think about men like the Apostle Paul. And I, I think about him preaching, and I think about him being stoned left for dead, and I think about his missionary journeys and travels. You ever think about how many unnamed days, unrecorded, where Paul was just walking from one city to the next? And not a single spectacular thing happened. But I submit to you that what the Apostle Paul did on those ordinary days mattered because it helped make up all the rest of his life. Let me give you a few thoughts. Would you write a few things down? I think on the back of your bulletin there's a place to make a few notes. And I'd encourage you to do this just to give you some thoughts to meditate on. Number one, would you write this down? Every ordinary day is a gift from God. In, in a sense... No day is ever really ordinary. Look, you're breathing right now. That beats the alternative, right? Why did God let you live today? The Bible says that in Him we live and move and have our very being. You have the health to get out of bed today. Guess who gave you that? Somewhere in this world today, someone's divine appointment had come and they left this world. But God lets you live today. And I want to tell you that every ordinary day is a gift from Almighty God. And what you do with this day, look, this may be, this day may be the last day God ever lets you live. And someday will be your last. And when you stand before God, every day will have mattered. Look, the Bible says we're going to give an account to God for everything done in our body, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That means that there is no day that can be wasted. Every day will be answered for. Do you believe in divine appointments? I do too. I try to live my life every day looking for a divine appointment. I think God has you here for today for a reason, and God has me here today for a reason. I don't think any of that's by accident. I believe in the providence of Almighty God. A little over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, my wife and I were celebrating our 15th wedding anniversary. And we were excited about it, and so I planned a big trip. We'd never done this before, but we flew down to, a, to an island in the Caribbean. Just she and I, and we had a wonderful time, spent a week together. And while I was there, all week long, I kept noticing a man, an elderly man, always alone, walking alone, eating alone, always alone. Two or three times during the week, we, we even conversed about him. My wife said, I wonder why that man's alone. Some comment was made, no conversation initiated. And finally, on the last morning, we were sitting at breakfast, about to leave to go to the airport, and I looked up, and there sat that elderly gentleman just across, just across the room from us, eating alone. And I said to my wife, I said, I've got to find out who that fellow is. It was a vacation-type area, and people just weren't there by themselves. Everybody had somebody with them. I left my seat and walked over to his table, and I said, I don't mean to be rude or interrupt, but I said, I see you sitting here by yourself. I've seen you this week, and I just want to introduce myself. My name's Scott, and I'm from the States, and from the state of Tennessee. Where are you from? He gave me his name and he said, I'm from England. He told me where. I knew where he was from and I said, we have an extension campus in England of our college. I've been there. We talked about his homeland for a while. I found out that this man had no family, well up in years and just traveling now, there by himself. I asked him about his past. He told me about it. He asked me what I did for a living and I told him I was a minister. We finished our conversation and he looked at me and he said, I have a question for you. He said, something I've been thinking a lot about. He said, since you're a minister, maybe you could help me. I said, well, I'll try. I've had that set up many times through the years, you know. I wonder what question was about to come next. And then he got a very serious look on his face. And he said, sir, he said, for the last several weeks, he said, I've been pondering, when I die, where will I be? He said, do you think you could answer that question? I said to him, a few minutes we had together, it's a big question. I said, but I think I can answer it because 
The answer is given in the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. And I proceeded to explain to him there's a real eternity. There's a heaven. There's a hell. And everybody's going to be somewhere. It doesn't all end when you breathe your last here. And the decisions you make now determine where you're going then. And I told him about the only one who could be a Savior to him. I've been praying for his salvation. He didn't get saved that day. I hope I see him in heaven someday. But you know what I believe? We left there, drove back to the, ho- to the airport, got on a plane, flew back to the United States. And all the while, I've been thinking this. Now all these many months, I've been thinking this. I think God sent us to that place in the world to meet that man. He said, no, no, you went to celebrate your anniversary. Oh, we were celebrating our anniversary, but think of all the places we could have gone. Think of all the places we could have stayed. And think of all the people we could have met, but God let me meet that man. I believe in divine appointments. And I think divine appointments come on ordinary days because every day is a gift from God. Let me give you a second thought to write down. Would you write this down, please? Ordinary days are often wasted. You know why ordinary days are wasted? Because ordinary days are the days when nobody's watching. Ordinary days are the days when nobody, nobody's expecting much of us. You know, we live most of our life with very low expectations, don't we? Can I remind you we have a big God, we should never have low expectations? Yeah. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says that our God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all we can ask or even think. Yeah. Talk about the superlatives. I mean, look, beyond anything you ever imagine, God's able to do. And yet, I submit to you that we waste most of our days. Even good Christian people. They would think, well, they're making their Sunday count because they're meeting with God's people. But I would ask you, what are you doing on Mondays? What are you believing God for on Tuesdays? How is God using you on Wednesday? What is the Lord teaching you on Thursday? What is the great lesson God has for you on Friday? Look, every day is important and not a single day should be wasted. Somewhere would you write this down? Life is squandered one day at a time. And I submit to you, if every day is a gift from Almighty God, and someday will be our last, then we must not waste a single day God gives us. So that brings me to a third thought. And this is the emphasis I want to place this morning. The only way to make ordinary days count is to give them back to God. Can I tell you something this morning, church? God can do more with your life than you can. As long as I try to control my own life and my own destiny, I just make an everlasting mess out of it. How about you? But when the God who is the author of life is in control, look, when he's writing the story instead of me, instead of blots, it's full of blessings. Instead of messes, it's full of God's miracles and God's goodness. And I would submit to you that the only way to make life count and the only way to be ready to stand before God in eternity is to take every day that God graciously gives to you and turn around and give that day back to God. How do you do that? Several years ago, God helped me with something, and I want to share it with you this morning. I'm trying to encourage you, just trying to give you something that will help you right where you are to know the Lord better and see God at work in your life. There are three habits I have every day. Let me just give them to you. Three habits I have every day that help me try to make that day count. Look, I'm trying to make this day count. This will be a short day for me. I'll get on a plane in a little while, and, and before I realize it, I'm going to be landing in Knoxville, Tennessee at 11.30 tonight. And uh, tomorrow's going to be an early day for me. I've got a class at 7.30 in the morning. I'm really excited about that, let me tell you. But I want to make every day count. How am I going to make every day count? Well, number one, I try to spend some time every day remembering the day I got saved. Recently, I was back in my hometown in West Virginia, and I went by the school where I came to know God. I went down the hallway. I asked someone to show me around. I went down the hallway. It's not even used as a classroom now. And I stood at about the place where I bowed my head and invited the Lord Jesus into my heart. The woman that was showing me around, she didn't quite know what to think. I said, this is where I came to know the Lord. She was a little puzzled by that, and I shared the story with her. That means something to me. Now, geographically, I'm a long ways from there this morning. But in my heart and mind, I can go back to that again and again and again as a point of reference because that was the day I was born again of the Spirit of God. That was the day my name was written down in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. That was the day Christ came to live in me. Now, wait a minute. It makes me want to make every day count when I realize I'm not my own. I belong to my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said it this way. We're to stir ourselves up by way of remembrance. You know, memory can be a terrible curse, can it? 
but it can also be a wonderful blessing to go back and ponder and remember God's goodness in your life. Look, friends, if you're sitting here today, God's been very good to you. And the greatest thing you could ponder was the day you came to know the Lord Jesus as your Savior because that gives you a whole new perspective on life. It's not about me, it's about Christ. It's not about time, it's about eternity. It's not about my circumstances. It's about what God is doing in my life and in this world. And every day I try to give some time to remembering the day I got saved. Number two, every day I try to give some time to spend alone with God. Allowing Him to speak to me through His Word. Speaking to Him in prayer. Every day, sometime alone with God. See, God still speaks. Now, not in some big booming audible voice. And I have the ability to speak to Him in prayer. But do you realize how many days we hurry here and there and rushing around everywhere and we miss the wonderful privilege to communicate with the Creator God of the universe? Let me boggle your mind for a moment. The God who said, Light, and there was light wants to talk to you today. The God who listened to David and Moses pray has his ear open to your prayer. And we're too busy? Let me give you something to chew on. Did you ever think about the first day man spent on earth? Anybody remember in the days of creation what day man was created? Sixth day. What happened on the seventh day? God rested. Look, please. God created everything man needed for existence and created man last. The crown of his creation. The one part of creation that could communicate with the creator God of the universe. And the very next day, God said, we're going to call a Sabbath. Watch this. The first day man lived on this earth was not a day of work. It was a day of communion with his creator. I would think that God would make man of the dust of the ground, breathe in his nostrils the breath of life, man becomes a living soul, and God would wind him up and say, all right, I've got a lot of work for you to do, now get out there and get the work done. But instead, the first day Adam lived on this planet, God said, I tell you what, let's call a day off and you just spend it with me. We'll rest and you worship and we'll, we'll get to know one another a little better. And then out of that, you'll go out to your work. You know what we do? We define our life by our work by what we can accomplish. Can I tell you, God can accomplish much more than you could accomplish with your life? As a matter of fact, the previous verse in this psalm says, this is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. Look, do you want to see with your life what you can do or do you want to see with your life what God can do? God's not expecting you to be extraordinary. God's not expecting you to create extraordinary days. God is expecting you, an ordinary person, to yield your ordinary life to God through every ordinary day and see what an extraordinary God can do with that. And I say again, God can do more with your life than you can. Spend some time with Him every day. And then the third thing, every day of my life, I try, I fail often, but I try to make a habit of thinking about the last day that I'll live on this earth, and that'll be the greatest day of my life because it'll be the day I see Jesus face to face. In other words, there's a day in the past I try to remember. I try to remember this day, communion with God, but there's a day in the future I try to think on. Look, nothing stirs me up like thinking today I might stand face to face with Almighty God. By the way, can I ask you a personal question? What if today were your last day on earth? What if I could tell you that 22 minutes from right now, Jesus was coming and we'd all stand before the Lord? What would you do differently today? Then that's what you should do with this day. Because someday, my friend, will be our last day on this earth. By the way, some of you right now are thinking, yeah, but I'm going through some tough days right now. I'm glad you mentioned that. Did you know that Psalm 118, you you get the idea when you read this verse, this is the day the Lord hath made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it that all is well, that the circumstances are all perfect. Did you know this psalm is a part of the Jewish Halil? Now, that may not mean much to you, but the Jewish Halil was always sung at the end of the celebration of Passover. Do you remember when the Lord Jesus called His disciples up into that upper room just before He went to Calvary to bleed and die for our sins? And He had the Last Supper, the last time He ever celebrated the Passover with them. And He instituted a memorial supper with them. You remember that? And when they finished their supper, Judas leaves. He's gone. It's just Jesus and the eleven. They don't understand what's about to happen, but He knows exactly what's about to happen. And the Bible says they sang a hymn and went out. 
Most Bible teachers believe that traditionally the hymn they would have sung. The conclusion of that supper was the Jewish Halil. Let's get this in perspective for a minute. That means that Jesus, on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane, on his way to the place where they will beat him and spit upon him, on the way to mock trials, on the way to a cross where they're going to crucify him, on the day of his death, sang with his disciples, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Look at me please, friends. Even on difficult days, God's at work. See, there's a little word in the second part of this verse doesn't get a lot of attention. The Bible says we, what's that word? Will. There's a choice in this. Look, some days I jump out of bed, man, it's good, all feels well, I'm going to have a great day today. Those are few and far between. How about you? Most days I wake up and still trying to get myself wide awake and already thoughts of the day and anxious cares start entering in. Wait a minute, at that moment I have a choice to make. What will I do with this day? What will I allow God to do with my life this day? And I submit to you, ordinary days matter. I said to you a moment ago that I write in a journal every day, and I've always been intrigued by reading the journals of people in history. Christopher Columbus, of course famous for his explorations and discoveries, kept a journal of all of his travels. I was fascinated to find out that most every day there was only a three-word entry. Only three words. And they were, we sailed on. Now he is remembered for the discovery of America. He is remembered for his exploration. He is remembered for certain extraordinary days. But the ordinary days were marked by this. We sailed on. And can I tell you some days that's exactly what God intends for us to do. Look. By God's grace and through faith, sail on. William Carey, the father of modern missions, he's remembered as a, as a pioneer missionary. You know what he said in his own testimony? He said, if I am remembered as a plodder, I will be happy. You know why that is? Because most days that's what we all have to do, just plod on. Some of you are dealing with things personally or with your family or some health need. I have no idea what you're doing with, dealing with right now, but listen to me. God has given you this day. Sail on. Plod on. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Believe that God is at work in ordinary days. Look, we serve an extraordinary God. And I say to you again, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like you to bow your head and close your eyes with me for just a moment. I want to thank you for giving such kind attention this morning.